How's it going everyone? Derek from Make Media Studios and this week we're going to be diving into Ultra Key in Premiere Pro. Roll that Make Media intro. How's it going? You know the drill. If this is your first time to the channel, go down below and hit that subscribe button. It would really help us out. I think at this moment we're at 113 subscribers. So I wanna see how many people from this video I can get to subscribe to my channel. We're trying to grow here and I need your guys' help to grow this community. It really means a lot. Thank you very much. All right, everyone, this week is a real simple tutorial. We're gonna go through Ultra Key in Premiere Pro. Um, there's lots of different ways to use Ultra Key. I'm just gonna go through the basic settings and what I used to create last week's intro in the video that I created. Here, I'm gonna play that intro right now. How's it going, everyone? Derek from Make Media Studios, and this is not actually my studio. We are on a green screen. Roll that setup B-roll. All right, so that intro piece right there um, was just a simple green screen built in my garage. All right, so let's just let's just dive right into um, Premiere Pro and see how this works. Okay, so I'm here in Premiere Pro and I'm in the effects panel and I have a sequence open called green screen test. You wanna have the top video on in the timeline be the one that you're gonna key out and that's almost like a layer like in Photoshop. That's my first layer and behind that, I have a blank slate of my office here. As you can see on this video clip right here that the green screen actually doesn't fill up the entire screen. So I'm gonna go here to my opacity tab. I'm gonna click my free draw bezier tool and I'm going to make a mask just around me and the green screen. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna go like this cause I know that my shot doesn't go that far out. I'm getting rid of some of this dark area of my green screen cause it wasn't perfectly done. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna hit right, like right there and across, okay? Just a simple mask of me and the green screen. You can scrub through this and check to make sure that your mask is good. See, the only time I have to be worried about is when my hand comes up. And it's fine, because my hand comes straight up. Um, Feather-wise, I'm gonna throw a little light feather on here because that helps with just blending a little bit, okay? That's that dotted line there. Feather, okay. So that's that, all right? Now let's go ahead and start working with Ultra Key. And I'm gonna step us through some of the settings in Ultra Key. Over here in the effects panel, I'm gonna search up Ultra Key. I'm gonna drag Ultra Key and drop it on the top clip, because that's the clip that I want to remove the green screen. It's got three basic settings right off the bat. It's got default, relaxed, aggressive, and then custom if you change any of the settings your own way. Um, you can go and click through these and see if any of them work for you. That is relaxed and there's aggressive. Um, and then custom goes back to the normal one that we were doing. Um, check them out, see if they work for you. For me, we're gonna have to go custom because my green screen is not perfectly even all the way around when it comes to the consistency of the lighting, okay? Here it's brighter and out here it's darker. If I sample with the command, see how it widens when I hit command, the um, dropper? That's because it's gonna do a five pixel average instead of a one pixel when you're not holding command. Hold command, if you go to the lightest edges, right? Let's move these up one and I'm going to go ahead and put a color mat and I'm gonna put a white piece of paper behind everything just so I can see what's going on a little bit better than the black. You see that I got these dark edges on the outside, but now if I find a color that's a little bit more in the middle section, let's go ahead and grab something that's a little bit out here. This might be a little bit easier to work with, okay? I would suggest finding like a mid-tone green, something that you can adjust. For me, the lightest greens aren't exactly what I want. I want something a little bit more in the mid-tones. Okay, I'm actually gonna grab the darkest green now. I'm gonna drop my highlight ones and see what I can do about bringing it all out of there. Ah. So I guess you just gotta look at what works for you. For me, sampling my darker green worked better than the lighter green because when I was pushing those shadows and everything in this area, I was getting a lot of spill. I was getting problems with the dark areas of my body. Since I have a more dark shot, uh, grabbing the darker green was able to be keyed better and easier. Let's go to the matte generation. We're gonna start with this first 
um, slider right here, okay? So transparency, it um, adjusts the transparency of the source image when keyed over a background. 100% is fully transparent and zero is fully opaque. So 100% fully transparent, it's gonna take me completely out of the shot. And then zero, it takes the green out, but it leaves the background, the actual layer. So I'm gonna mess with it a little bit and see what I can do. I, I'm gonna leave that at normal. I'm not gonna even touch that because it starts to mess with me and my skin. Highlights, okay, the highlights set at 10. Highlights adjust the opacity of the light area of the source image. Okay, so it's gonna look at the light areas of the image and, and mess with that. I don't really think I need to do too much with the highlights in this because, actually, I'm gonna drop the highlights a little bit. It's gonna help me fill out the middle section of that, um, of that green screen. We're still working on this section, which was kind of the shadow section, which is the next part. Shadow, okay? Um, shadow adjusts the opacity of the dark areas of the source image. Okay, so now we can sit there and pull this in just a little bit and get rid of it. It's looking, it's looking all right. But let's see what happens with my hands here. Let's see, what, see in this frame here, this is a motion blur in the shot. Okay, and it's showing the green screen through the hand. I'm gonna show you a trick I used here a little bit later to fix that color, because that makes it pretty obvious that it's a green screen. Um, after filming this, I actually learned that if you up your shutter speed, you have less motion blur, and then you can just add the motion blur in post using like an optical flow in Premiere Pro. But here, I had a 180 shutter degree angle, and this is what I got. I think I use those highlights and shadows the most to touch up the inconsistencies in the green screen, okay? Tolerance. Um, it adjusts the range of the colors selected. So if there's different areas of green, it's gonna adjust that in the tolerance. But it's gonna mess with my hat a little bit because my hat's a little bit green. So I'm just gonna reset that to normal 50. I'm not gonna mess with that. Um, pedestal. All right, so the pedestal filters out noise from the alpha channel and can improve the key when working in low light footage. Okay, well, this isn't really low light footage, and if I mess with that, it's gonna start messing with my hands a lot. So I don't see any issue with pedestal for me, but it might be something you need to do. The way I learned how to use ultra key is just kind of sliding through these settings, almost in order, starting from the top down. Um, Mat cleanup, I'm not gonna do too much in there, but, I'll show you what it does. All right, choke shrinks the size of the mat, okay? The alpha channel, or the alpha, chan the alpha channel mat is what's left over, but it's not the green screen, okay? That's the mat, okay? Um, back in the day in film, they used to do um, matte paintings on, um, they would paint like a house on glass, and they'd film through it, and they'd fake house, and then they'd be like next to a pond or something like that. That's where the word kind of matte came from, because it was a matte painting on glass. Here, it's kind of what you're doing. You're, you're making a matte painting of yourself that you're gonna put on something else, like this footage that I have behind here. So now we got the chair, we got me in there, we, got, we went through matte generation, cleanup, okay, let's go through the different settings of cleanup. We got choke, okay? The choke is shrinks the size of the alpha channel matte, okay? So that's actually, let me zoom in to one of these sections here. If you have like, spill on something like a neckline or on the shirts, using the choke would help. But you notice, as I choke things, it's gonna start pulling the image back. You see how it's cutting into me right here? See all this right here as it disappears and comes back? That's 100% and that's, um, and then that's zero right there. So if you need the choke to get rid of some, some inconsistencies in the shot, I would do that, okay? So that's what I'm gonna go with. That's there, throw in the background. From Make Media Studios, and this is not actually my studio. Okay, looking good. Um, we're gonna drop this down to eighth. So then, you know, choke, soften. I didn't really need to do very much of that. I would, I mean, I'd add like five choke and then like five soften just to, just to get those edges a little soft. That's pretty good. And contrast midpoint. Let's go ahead and put this white background back on here. Now there's other settings here in the spill correction and the color correction, which I don't really use. That can adjust your actual shot. This changes the hue of your shot here in color correction. Um, this changes the luminance of the shot of your actual, um, what's left in the alpha channel. 
and then the spill suppression adjusts what's going on on the edges with any type of extra green that it finds. Uh, I don't need to use any of that, and you can desaturate um, some of the edges. I don't need to use that. But spill suppression and color correction, those are also in the ultra key section. All right, so that's pretty much that. Now, I had a little tip here I wanted to show you. When my hand moves there, see all this green in my hand? Let's put this back. That motion blur really shows that my hand is on a green screen. Um, so the way I fixed that, and I had to find a little bit of a workaround, is let's just add an adjustment layer on top of it, which is just kind of like a blank layer in Photoshop if you're used to Photoshop and not Premiere Pro. But let's just put that on there. And what I started to find was if I went to my Lumetri color and I went to my curve section and I'm gonna change the saturation of that green. So I'm gonna go hue versus hue. I'm gonna get the sampler. I'm gonna grab some of this green color. It shows up as orange on my correction diagram here, but watch, I'm gonna try to adjust this. So as I adjust that, it's gonna mess with everything else in the shot. Don't worry about that. Just look at the hand. Which way do you have to adjust it to make it look? I pulled this up into the red, right? Right, it's a little bit too magenta. Okay, let's just sample that off and on on the hand here. So that makes the hand green. That makes it kind of back to skin tones when it's going through. It makes it a little more gray and skin tone color. So I just did that. I adjusted that one tone just enough to hide that green behind my hand. Now, you could be telling me, well, you're adjusting other things in the shot too, and that's true. I probably am. So why don't we just go ahead and put a mask on this adjustment layer just over this section where the hand kind of comes up and comes back down in the shot, and that will help do that, okay? So take this off, take it back on. So I got rid of that green. It worked, it helped Video. trick. We are on a green screen. Okay, and that's that. So then for my trick, my, my, my click transition, screen. I found the clip, there it is. And I hit E to cut everything, got rid of the adjustment layers, came in here, um, turned off that mask, came in here, turned off everything in here, and left that behind it. So, and it goes well, back to the normal shot. All right, so that's just my basic ultra key run through. What I did to do that shot. Now, ultra key is something that you're gonna have to play around with. You can't copy and paste these exact numbers and settings I put in here because your green or your lights and your highlights and shadows are gonna be a little bit different than mine. So you're gonna have to play around with these sliders. Like I said, well, this is the ones I'd mess with the most. I'd start with matte generation and matte cleanup. Those are your two that you're gonna work with. Then adjust your, um, use those color correction hue versus hue adjustment layers if you have any bleed through on motion blur or shoot your footage at a higher shutter speed and apply motion blur later. Those are my tips and tricks for ultra key. That's what I did to make this shot. It's a pretty simple green screen shot. A lot more advanced green screen shots are out there and you could probably find some more advanced tutorials than this, but at least this gives you a basic run through seeing me key out that intro scene that I did last week. Thank you very much for watching my video today. Um, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and I will try to answer them. We had a really big podcast last week. It was awesome. Thanks everyone for watching that. Again, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, more content coming out to you soon. Next one's gonna be another commercial. All right, guys. Thank you very much. This has been another Make Media tutorial. We are out. How's it going, everyone? Derek from Make Media Studios, and I'm about to start my YouTube video, and my cat just woke up. He's eating food, he's licking his asshole, and he's taking a shit. All happening right now while I'm trying to film. <laughs> Welcome to having a cat.